In this video, we're going over the mid-season July 11th patch that includes a lot of changes, including many changes to your favorite heroes, no other additions to the game, and more. But if you're looking to climb to Grandmaster, I have coached over 100 plus players to Grandmaster at Overwatch 2, and if you want to become the next one on the list, check out my Patreon right now in the links down below, and let's get started. Now, before we get into the character changes, let's talk about cool additions. The Summer Games 2023, we're going to be getting a Winston Beach Volleyball. We're going to be getting some new cosmetic rewards, Lucio Ball Remix, and Lucio Ball. So, some old and some new, but I'm just kind of happy for a little bit of anything right now. In addition to that, they did some on-fire adjustments. There was some weird, like, randomly on fire at the start of rounds and decaying happening too fast. And there was just, like, a couple of different things that was happening that they kind of just tweaked and made it better overall. In addition to that, they're adding Team Q, which is an all-new competitive mode for Overwatch 2, requiring everyone to play in a full group of five players. And it has no rank restrictions, and it will be available the entire of Season 5. That means that Grandmaster players can play and actually stack with other players that are much lower rank and they just will balance it out in the back end. I'm really curious to see how this is going to work collectively. I am a little bit worried about smurfing and things like that, but I don't really think that that's that important for this at the start. I think right now the only thing that matters is giving players a way to play together regardless of their skill differential because honestly more smurfing happens trying to play with friends than anything else and then in addition to that now grandmaster players can stack which is really really cool i'm excited for this mode and another thing that's very interesting players do not queue for specific roles instead choosing their roles within each match which is pretty crazy you still have to have one tank two damage dealers and two supports but i could technically swap with my buddy maybe on certain maps my tank pick isn't viable so he plays right on the those maps and I play something else and that's super super cool I like the camaraderie and the coordination here that only would work in a five stack environment Let's get to what you're waiting for, the character changes, and there's a shit ton of them. Okay, first off, let's talk about Arissa. Arissa, they're increasing the effectiveness of Fortify to make Arissa a stronger counter against team compositions that lean on crowd control. Damage reduction increased from 40 to 50%. Don't imagine that this is going to majorly move Arissa to be broken out of nowhere. She kind of just does more of what she already could do, which is be very, very hard to kill. I don't think this affects any major breakpoints, but it kind of emphasizes the do not shoot at Arissa at aspect of going up against the Rissa that I preach a lot because she's just not going to be killable unless she's way out of position 99% of the time. Next up, we do got to talk about Ramatra, and they said this. Sometimes the Ravenous Vortex projectile hits an enemy and bounces off unpredictably, delaying its activation. The quality of life change improves the ability consistency and makes it easier to use against a group of enemies without fear of accidental collisions. So now the Vortex projectile will pass through enemies but still be blocked by barriers. Now, while this is technically a quality of life change, it still slightly makes Ramatra a bit more powerful because of the consistency factor, but nothing that matters or will change anything. So let's move on. Next up, we do got to talk about Reinhardt, and they are increasing Reinhardt's barrier uptime to help him protect his allies, and they'll be keeping a close eye as they want to avoid situations where players feel like they're always shooting the barriers. Reinhardt's barrier field maximum health increased from 1200 to 1400. I honestly think this is a fine change with Ryan falling down the pegs as far as a brawl tank is concerned after his last nerfs. And I don't really think that this overwhelmingly changes Ryan's viability at the high rank. But when players play poorly into him and just being able to randomly have more barrier for those situations where you utilized a lot of it to get in close and you need a little bit more to help enable you to brawl or help enable you to deny abilities, that can be the difference. That 200 can be the difference. Overall, they did say that they want to have players avoid situations where they're shooting barriers, but as I always teach you, you shouldn't be spamming Ryan's barriers anyways the majority of the time. Next up, we do going to talk about Wrecking Ball, and they said Wrecking Ball rarely reloads his quad cannons manually due to the automatic reload that triggers while transformed into ball. This change makes reloading without changing forms a more viable option. So, the quad canyon mana reload time reduced from 2 to 1.6 seconds. This does not affect the automatic reload while transformed into a ball, which is still 2 seconds. I think this is nice. I mean, it's a really, really tiny buff for Wrecking Ball, and Wrecking Ball's not really that strong right now. But uh, yeah, I think it's fine. It doesn't really change the character, I don't think, fundamentally or in the meta. 
But I'm actually going to commend Blizzard on a lot of these changes to tanks because what I've said in the past is I like it when they do small incremental changes as opposed to just slapping huge buffs and nerfs that have huge meta implications out of nowhere and they seem to do it over and over again the past four seasons. So I'm glad that they're taking things a bit slower here and I like it. But that being said, where the hell is the Doom buffs, man? Okay, all right, all right. I'm moving on to the damage dealers. Let's talk about Sojourn. So they said they're decreasing the overall spread on the railgun primary fire to help Sojourn and build more energy consistently the increased shots before reaching maximum spread will give players more direct control over aiming the projectiles when firing in short bursts so number of shots to reach maximum spread increased from 8 to 12 spread reduced by 12 percent now i don't really know why they're buffing sojourn i think sojourn's a fine character i think she's perfectly powerful yes she's not going to have great win rates until you get to the upper tiers of play but i think that that's fine for the character it fits in with what the character can do and how you get your value on the character which a lot of that is tied to your railgun alternate fire consistency but that being said i don't think that this change busts the character or anything like that it is a nice change and it's going to be felt you're going to be a bit more reliable and consistent on sojourn and i do like the fact that the railgun primary fire isn't going to be as spammy which i feel like is the problem right now where sometimes you're just spamming it down lanes to charge your alternate fire you're not really even trying to aim it some of the time from a certain distance and i do think that this helps that a little bit all in all not gonna break sojourn but it is a decent buff next up let's talk about soldier and they said soldier's strengths is his reliability damage output but it hasn't been quite as effective enough after his last round of changes they like to avoid going all the way back up to 20 damage on his primary fire since it has proven too powerful in the past so instead they're adjusting both primary and secondary fire damage slightly he'll also be able to stay in the fight longer to support his team more effectively with extra healing from the biotic field so they're increasing his pulse rifle damage from 18 to 19 his helix rocket explosive damage increased from 80 to 90 and his biotic field healing per second increased from 35 to 40. And I want to make it clear that these changes make Soldier a freaking menace. Like, this is a serious buff. Buffs to everything across the board. I mean, just the damage alone would be felt quite a bit. But giving him more healing so he could sustain against dives from Genji, Tracer, and D.Va, and giving him more Helix Rocket damage is just cherry on top. I do think that this makes Soldier quite powerful, and I'm interested to see how this will impact the meta. Next up, we do got to talk about Symmetra, and they said that Symmetra is exceptionally map-dependent to the point where she is oppressive in certain situations, let ineffective in others. The following changes increase her weapon's effectiveness while lessening some of the frustrations caused by her turret. Now, the Photon Projector Secondary Fire Maximum Impact Damage increased from 45 to 50. Secondary Fire Maximum Explosive Damage increased from 45 to 50. Sentry Turret Damage now reduced from 40 to 25. Turrets now reveal enemy heroes to allies while dealing damage for one one additional second afterwards. Now, I have actually talked to quite a few Symmetra Top 500 mains, including Meta 1 in the past, about Sim's kit, and at the highest level, turret is more of a distraction than it is damage. It's not necessarily the most consistent form of value, so I do imagine that some of these other changes will be a buff to Symmetra in ranked high rank play. So, if you're like Masters or above, this probably is going to feel like a buff, or can be if you have a certain play style, but for a lot of Symmetras, this is going to feel like a nerf in the majority of ranks, but we do know know that Symmetra had the highest individual win rate in most of the metal ranks of play so I do think they're trying to take away some of the intrinsic value that is given to you automatically from the turrets and give it to other aspects of her kit but I'm not sure if it's a fair trade-off we're gonna have to wait and see Next off, they talk about Torb, and Torb Turret is getting too much impact for the little investment, so they're shifting some of his power to give it to the rest of his kit and take it away from that turret. So now the Rivet Gun secondary fire spread reduced from 5 to 4.5 degrees, which actually could be a big deal because, honestly, the Rivet Gun primary is just better most of the time, even from close range, but this might change the numbers. Deployed turret damage reduced from 14 to 11, cooldown increased from 10 to 12 seconds, and overload now reloads 6 ammo on on use. And I do think that giving more power to his shotguns and his overload is a nice change. That is a really substantial nerf to turret though. So if you are playing Torb to discount a tracers or non-pocketed flyers, it's going to be quite a bit worse at doing that and i do think that torp is overall going to be worse but still it's nice that he's given a little bit of a more diverse kit that relies more on skill rather than just automatic value Next up, we do got to talk about supports, and they said originally they increased the Afuda recovery time to promote more kunai usage between healing bursts. Despite that benefit, they are partially reverting the change so that primary fire feels more responsive in situations where Kiriko is pressured to focus entirely on healing. So the recovery reduced from 1 to 0.9 seconds. 
This gen is going to feel a bit better when you're under those high pressure situations where a lot of people are weak and you feel like you need to heal and you can't just deal damage. That being said, I don't really think that Kirko needed this and this was kind of something that you could exploit on the character and they're kind of shoring up a slight weakness, but it doesn't fully shore it up. It's just a slight tweak, a slight buff. Overall, I think it's fine, but uh, I'm not entirely sure why they think Kirko needed to be more viable at all. Last but certainly not least, we gotta talk about Zen. The combination of these changes will make it riskier for Zen to apply Discord and increase counterplay for the affected target. Maximum range reduced from 40 to 30 meters. Time to wear off the target when not in line of sight reduced from 2 to 1.5 seconds. Now, we did talk about in the past how we thought that Discord in a ranked environment when you could just put it on a tank is a frustrating experience for the tank, really powerful, and uh, something that should have gotten changed. But I said many, many times, that they needed to compensate removing or nerfing Discord's value with some other amount of value, and they didn't do that. They just straight up nerfed Zen, and I'm pretty disappointed about it, to be honest. I understand that Discord was really, really powerful, and of course, this is not going to really hurt your dueling capabilities on Zen, but it is frustrating that they took a character that isn't really even seeing any Overwatch League play or that much, and they're just straight up nerfing him, while at the same time buffing Kiriko. I don't really understand here. Well, I did think that the changes, especially to the DPS and the tanks, were good changes, slight changes that made sense. These support changes to me feel a little bit weird. I don't think it's that big of a deal, but uh, overall, it does feel a bit strange to me. That being said, there's never been a time this midseason to dominate the ladder and climb to Grandmaster and beyond. So if you want to improve very quickly, you got to check out my Patreon. Links will be in the description down below. Thanks so much for coming by, and I'll see you next time.